now gives me great pleasure to um, welcome Dr. Bogdan Chiva Duka. Thank you so much for waking up at this ungodly hour in the United Kingdom. <laughs> Um, but we really are thrilled to have you. So um, Bogdan is a medical doctor um, and he works with the South Thames Foundation School in London. He's also the development lead of the Global um, Social Prescribing Alliance and a clinical champion lead at the National Academy for Social Prescribing. So we're really looking forward to hearing what you have done. I know you've been a champion even since you were a young medical student. Um, and you're continuing to do that with our students and young graduates. So welcome, Bogdan. Thank you ever so much for such a warm welcome. Can I just double check that you can all hear me and see me? All great, thank you. Fantastic. Well, the easy part was joining. I think the hard part is navigating the technology as, as always. And I do wish we were in person. Uh, good morning for me, actually. And I do apologize, my brain freezes a bit. It, it is uh, 4.45 a.m. in the UK, so uh, good morning from here. But uh, I think this is also a, a bit of a reflection of what social prescribing is about and a representation of what uh, uh, champions really do. And I know many of you of our colleagues in Australia have tuned in at very similar hours in various talks for us in the UK. So I'm just repaying back uh, the favour and here to, to share some, some of what we do in the UK, but also across the globe. So uh, really a, a big thank you for having me here. And I look forward to uh, hearing some questions and some great discussion uh, later on as well. By all means, if there's any Anything that uh, picks your interest within this talk, please get in touch. Uh, we always love to support and, and send any resources that you may find uh, useful. What I did want to start though with is this idea of uh, a bit of a confession for me as a, as a young doctor um, to say that in all honesty, if it wasn't for social prescribing, I would uh, consider quitting tomorrow uh, and that's really a wholehearted confession uh, from a young professional uh, failing his patients in hospital many times from a psychological and from a social point of view uh, and and talking a bit around uh, the idea of reverse engineering the idea of health in general uh, to realize that uh, 10 minute appointments and and the short time that we have focusing on the sick care the patching up and the revolving door system is not enough. Uh, but hey, I know I'm, I'm preaching to the already converted today, and I know you, you all are big fans of social prescribing, so I will say no more uh, to that. But just wanted to say that for me and for many other uh, young doctors and healthcare professionals in the UK, social prescribing is, is bringing uh, a bit of hope uh, to say that uh, there is uh, a support for, for patients beyond uh, the biomedical aspects and beyond what we can offer in our limited um, time within the uh, secondary and primary care environment. Uh, as you all may know, uh, social prescribing in the UK has been made policy about two years ago, uh, and it's been officially made the uh, policy as part of the government initiative part of the wider personalised care plan and give a funding uh, as part of that as well. The model that we're using is very similar to the model that you also are using with the link worker, uh, i.e. the community social prescriber, um, as, as some, some may call as well. Uh, and the idea of them being uh, employed officially as a separate job as part of the healthcare system to give what I would never be able to give, which is uh, time. And again, uh, making that differentiation between active signposting and uh, true social prescribing, which is what link workers do when they sit down with those most hard to reach. Um, in terms of the pathway and the way um, um, the national healthcare system has been doing this is that the funding received um, set out a target um, for 1,000 link workers by April 2021 um, last year and we are uh, well above that. It is estimated that there are around 2,000 link workers at the moment in the UK but we're pulling a bit of a signal of, of alarm to say um, that that's not enough and we we're hoping to get at least at uh, four or five thousand in the next um, year or, or so or at least by 2023 um, to, to say the least as well and that's because we've noticed some of them struggle uh, with the referrals as well so I do apologize for the busy slide but it's mostly to um, to note to note that the, the the threshold and the target has been passed um, and surpassed uh, by by the efforts from the government as well 
We're also looking at building the wider ecosystem. And I, I know many of you may be familiar with this model called the Froome model. Froome is a village in the UK uh, that you may be familiar with, but they've trained hairdressers and firefighters and, uh, and the, the local community to act as volunteers and to act as buddies. And they develop different tier systems uh, for people who want to be involved in social prescribing, more or less. So yes, there will be the social prescribing link workers officially providing the role, but then they've offered the opportunity uh, for volunteers to receive some training. And a volunteer could be anyone within the local uh, society, in the local community, who wanted to find out more about uh, the, the signs of uh, poor mental health and how they could spot someone. And very similarly, Buddies would have, was a light touch offer um, to local community uh, agents uh, that, that could notice changes in mental health social needs and so on and so forth. And so if you were to take a taxi from one place to another, or if you were to go to the hairdressers and you looked under the weather, uh, they should be able to refer you themselves and they should be able to connect you to some of those services uh, themselves. So a bit of the wider ecosystem building, uh, and you can find out more by, by Googling the Froom model there as well. And I guess it's a cry for saying that health uh, does not start within hospitals, like many of you have said earlier in your talks, it starts within our communities uh, and local homes. And it really is about championing. And this is some of the work that we are currently uh, doing within the uh, UK, and we're hoping to um, um, develop a bit across the world as well. Uh, but it's about developing true champions that act as agents of change. Uh, as you said, I started as a medical student in social prescribing about seven years ago, uh, when people dismissed it a bit because of the lack of evidence at the time. Uh, but it was through champions uh, pushing for the need to support people emotionally, uh, psychologically and socially beyond biomedical needs, uh, which got this uh, into, into the uh, curriculum for healthcare uh, uh, professionals across the UK, but also within uh, policy. So we developed a program for a cohort every single year where they receive training and, and teaching around social prescribing. And anyone can be a champion, be they clinical or non-clinical, we're looking at discharge coordinators, uh, we're looking at uh, general practice managers, we're looking at uh, receptionists, uh, and they get a bit of a badge with ask me about social prescribing and they uh, uh, role as a champion. Uh, and then they act as a bit of a friend and an ally for the link worker within the multidisciplinary team uh, to advocate for the um, services in there as well. We obviously uh, still care about the, the future generation and the workforce, myself being caught very early and influenced to uh, care about social prescribing. Uh, and we have bursaries for students, not only within the UK, but also across the world. And uh, very proud to say that uh, Australia has been really uh, backing this up and supporting this. Uh, and they've launched uh, their own medical student uh, movement, uh, Jasmine being one of the presidents from uh, the uh, Australian Medical Student association uh, and having uh, involvement from 19 different medical schools so I'm sure if any of you would like to get involved with the, the young students uh, please do and get in touch with them because uh, they would love to to help as much as possible. Uh, we've launched Global Social Prescribing Alliance in, in collaboration with the United Nations and the World Health Organization. And this really is uh, about um, supporting partners across the world understand what good social prescribing looks like. So the building blocks, if you like, uh, in, in supporting partners in, implement social prescribing within their own country. There's a great document that may help um, called uh, a Social Prescribing Playbook that we put together that you can download via this website. And there's also student structure for anyone interested, not just for medical students, but for, for healthcare students uh, about redefining um, healthcare in general and, and looking at um, a biopsychosocial approach to um, care as well. We are working to develop some of the evidence, which is something that I wanted to cover with uh, a, a true global network of partners from around the world. And I wanted to put out an invitation for you all uh, as well to, to join um, the academic collaborative, uh, which you can sign up to uh, via this link. Uh, I can post this in the chat later as well, uh, but there will be an air meet on Tuesday, 29th of, of March. And the academic 
really partners we, who started in the UK to map out social prescribing evidence and to summarize the, the facts and use it as narrative for policy um, are going to, to meet on the 29th uh, and discuss this on a global scale, uh, hoping that they could get a, a, a call for action for uh, papers from abroad. Uh, we've got partners internationally who have submitted papers uh, that weren't um, available in a translated format. And so we're hoping that now they'll be able to collate all the information available uh, and uh, make some connections between the existing evidence uh, across the globe. Um, so do sign up to that if you have a chance. And of course, uh, today really uh, sets out uh, the celebrations for Social Prescribing Week, uh, which runs between 4th of March and 11th of March. Uh, so really a, a big a bit of an ask to see what you're all doing on and Social Prescribing Day, which is scheduled for uh, 10th of March and hoping to, to join uh, as in a bit of a movement uh, to make sure we push this uh, uh, concept further, not only within the UK, not only within Australia, but across the globe, not because it's a it's a nice thing but it's because it, it's a must uh, and it's something that we should all be uh, looking at uh, due to the workforce pressures we're all facing at the moment uh, and the struggles um, that the COVID-19 pandemic has surfaced but have been there before such as health inequalities and, and social determinants of health uh, impacting people's um, lives. Uh, I will stop there uh, and I will stop sharing my screen as well, but do uh, uh, any questions you may have, do get in touch. Uh, and